Hey guys, Big Square, Road to uh, I want to talk, talk about conspiracies. Conspiracies I see with my own eyes. These are uh, Generation 3 night vision goggles. I got them from Ed Grimsley. I don't know if you guys remember Ed Grimsley, old ex-CIA guy. I uh, used to post a lot of videos on YouTube uh, about the things he saw in the sky with his night vision goggles. These are uh, Russian-made Gen 3 um, you can go on Amazon and get a pair. They're expensive, like three, three grand or so. Um, but it gets to that point where you're told about conspiracies your whole life and, and you either believe them or you don't believe them. Uh, those who do the research usually end up saying, my God, this is actually based in fact. Maybe not all fact, but depending on what the conspiracy is, it's based in fact. Um, so that was one of the reasons I got these night vision goggles is because people were telling me, you know, aliens are real and it made sense to me. And, uh, you know, we have a secret space program and there's other things flying in the sky at late at night that you can't explain. So I got my own goggles and it is a, it's been a joy having them these last few years. I do see a whole lot of things going on in the sky. I see the triangle craft. I see the cigar craft. I see, uh, squadrons flying around, not every night, but, uh, um, it has a lot to do with the atmosphere. Is it clear? Is it not clear? I live near a city, so that plays into it. Um, and the uh, the amount of light given off by the moon um, has a big difference on how much you can see at night. Because the darker, the better with night vision goggles. So yes, conspiracies are real. Uh, our U.S. government conspired to hide all kinds of things from us. And it's just coming up with this JFK stuff. Uh, those of you that didn't know, Kennedy was um, knee-deep in the alien information back in the 40s and 50s um, when he was in the Navy. Yeah, he worked for the Office of Naval Intelligence, and that's who was in charge of the, of the aliens, Majestic 12, all that stuff that you've heard about but not real sure if it's real or not. Um, was Kennedy assassinated because of it? I, you can name a thousand things why he was assassinated. It is coming out that uh, the U.S. clearly has been lying to the people of America. Uh, the big secret hasn't come out yet. Who was really responsible for Kennedy? I do think it was Bush Sr. and his father, um, Harriman Bush. I think it was, no, he, he worked for Brown Brothers Harriman. Uh, Prescott Bush was his name. And he actually got tried in front of Congress for uh, funding the Nazis. Uh, yes, it is that deep of a conspiracy. So conspiracies are real. And conspiracies need to be uh, exposed for what they are if we're ever to move on. Our government lies to us and we can't live in these lies. Just read the latest releases of the Kennedy assassination papers. They talk about all these covert uh, operations, how they were going to kill Castro and, and all kinds of things, even into the space program. Uh, Ken, uh, George Bush Sr. was knee deep in the Kennedy assassination um, just look, go look up Zapata Oil and the CIA connections there, and you're going to find uh, Bush all over the place in really, really bad criminal stuff. Um, yes, he was in Houston. He was a CIA operative that claimed not to be, but then he claimed he was, so nobody really knew if George Bush was in the CIA at that time and where he was outside of Dallas, inside of Dallas, where, you know, he sent a memo the day, a couple hours after Kennedy's, uh, he, he called the CIA headquarters to say, oh, I'm, I'm way out of town. I'm not near Dallas, in case you're wondering. Um, so, yes, I think that, and, and if you look at what uh, Bush, not Bush, what uh, Trump has withheld, uh, he, he made an announcement that he's going to release the JFK documents. He then pulled back and said, well, we're going to have to keep some redacted. And then he says we're going to release all of them except for the information related to people who are still alive. Well, who's still alive? Daddy Bush. Barely. So do we think that Daddy Bush is going to die off in the next 100 days, 180 days that uh, uh, Trump said we're going to hide the name? Uh, probably will. He's pretty old. And, and you notice also. You know, not to get conspiracy on you, uh, you notice also that there's all this bad news coming about coming out about Bush Senior, how he was uh, sexually abusing all these women, and yeah, you know, the guy's like 94 in a wheelchair, and now they're coming out about this stuff. I mean, this this is 
this stuff has been going on since day one with the Bush family and, and the Clintons and the Obamas. Um, and it's bad. So yes, conspiracies are absolutely real, absolutely true. The rigging of the silver market is absolutely a conspiracy. Conspiracy is just two people agreeing to commit a crime. That's all conspiracy is. And then you have different levels and layers of conspiracy. But conspiracies held by our own government is what uh, they're trying to protect. And they're trying, the CIA has to redact all these documents because they don't want to tell the people that their own government, there were people within their own government conspiring to kill one of the a duly elected president, one of the most loved presidents in the history of the United States. Um, and they don't want you to know about it. They don't want. They don't want anybody to know about it. But everybody sees it now. You know, we see it with the Jim Comey, and all that crap that went down with the CIA and the FBI. But it's all coming out now. And so I guess this is kind of a, an update on the battle between the good guys and the bad guys behind the scenes. I've been talking about this since I discovered the Road to Ruta comics out of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, and they talk about overthrowing the big people, as they call them, who might step on us little people. And yes, this is the Federal Reserve talking about this. And it's in a comic book. It's hidden. And then Ruto writes in the sand this formula for asset allocation in the original comic, 1981. And then in 2007, right before the crash, they came out with a revised version. And all she wrote in the sand was 9 plus 11, a.k.a. 9-11. And, or it's 11 plus 9 is what she wrote. And if you know anything about the conspiracies behind 9-11, you'll know that it wasn't, you know, 19 hijackers. That's the most ridiculous story ever told. Uh, I think it's 3,000 engineers have now come out to say that these, the buildings, all three buildings that fell at free fall speed in New York could not have happened. Uh, it's architecturally impossible. It was, uh, <laughs> it, it is impossible for a free a building of that size and that construction to fall at free fall speed. And if you believe one and two fell at free fall speed because it got hit by a plane, that's the most ridiculous thing. But then I want you to please explain to the world how Building 7, who wasn't hit by anything, it, it caught fire in one of the CIA offices, fell to the ground at free fall speed. You explain to me how that happened, and then I'll say, oh, yeah, conspiracies are all made-up stuff. They aren't made-up stuff. They are real, and it is time to wake up. We have to wake up. The good guys have delayed the wake-up a little bit, and that's what was all the, the whole thing behind whether or not Trump would release the JFK documents is, you know, when you, when you expose that to humanity to say, hey, for 55 years, every single politician in government has within government and every new person that came in, an old person that went out, uh, has held this secret from you that one of your sitting presidents was involved in the JFK assassination. That would be Bush Sr. That's why they're hiding his name everywhere and that's why Trump came out and said we're going to release all the documents except for we're going to redact the living, the names of living uh, people who are still around. And I mean there's not a lot of people from that whole cluster, you know what, is still around, but Bush Sr.'s name is all over that thing. So all the documents are going to have redacted Bush Sr., probably his company, Zapata Oil, which was the CIA front. Um, and, and But the, the conspiracy part is not hard to prove at all. Uh, just look at John Hinckley. Remember John Hinckley, the guy who shot Ronald Reagan? Ronald Reagan was president. He was shot by John Hinckley. Bush Sr. was vice president at the time. Had uh, Reagan died from his gunshot wounds, then uh, Bush Sr. would have been president. Well, who is John Hinckley? Is he just a guy obsessed with Jodie Foster? No, he wasn't. He was the son of the owner of Hinckley Oil, a, a partner with Zapata Oil with the Bush family out of uh, Texas. It's been proven time and time again. Uh, John Hinckley's father or brother was meeting with Bush, uh, one of the Bush brothers at the time of the assassination. It made the front page of a paper, and then it was buried. That is how conspiracies happen. Uh, but it's a known thing, and you know everybody, anybody who doesn't know that John Hinckley Jr. is the son of John Hinckley Sr., a friend of 
Bush Sr. and partner with uh, Hinkley Oil and Zapata Oil, then you're not doing your research. And you shouldn't say, oh, it's just a conspiracy theory. Well, conspiracy theories have facts behind them for the most part. Uh, not all of them are true. That's why you do your homework. But just don't believe what the government tells you. Don't believe especially what the, the mainstream media tells you. Go out and do your due, due diligence and your own homework. Um, but as far as uh, what's going on, I think uh, we're looking at a delay a little bit of at least 180 days before silver's cut loose. I know it's pissing off a lot of the silver people, but I, I still believe that they're going to delay. Yeah, silver might go up to 25 bucks, but you know that's a an, an increase of 50% when the cryptos will probably go up 500% between now and then. Some of the cryptos, and I outlined them in my uh, Friday road trip for private road members. I, I, I tell you exactly what I did. I sold 20% of my physical silver, and I bought uh, about, I think it's about five different cryptos that I think are going to have big announcements between now and 180 days. Uh, to me, it's a no-brainer investment. Absolutely no-brainer. Uh, I even thought about selling more silver, but I do know once the silver manipulation ends that it's not going to go to $50 or $100. It's going to go to 6000 or 600 6000 and then 10000 I think silver will catch up to the price of gold, uh, mainly because we need it more than we need gold. And there's about an equal amount of both above ground. There's about 6 billion ounces of silver, and there's about 6 billion ounces of gold. Um, so I do see a one-to-one -one ratio at some point during the, the silver frenzy when it breaks free of the manipulators. Uh, but I don't think it's going to happen in the next six months. So uh, I hold on to my physical silver except for this 20% that I sold. And I'm going to buy it back after six months. In 180 days, I'm going to buy I Mark my words. I, and I'll tell you when I do it. I'm going to buy back all the silver that I sold. And uh, I'm going to buy it back with the proceeds of all the cryptos that I bought uh, just this weekend. So that's that's the plan on the road to Ruta. And I know a lot of people are angry. Oh, you just dissing silver again. I love silver. Don't get me wrong. I also know it's 100% rigged every day, every trade. So if it goes up to $25, it's not breaking free of the manipulators. It was a click of a mouse in the basement of the treasury by Steve Mnuchin. So yes, I have uh, made the move already. So anybody interested in what I bought on the crypto side, go to roadtoruta.com and just subscribe and you can check it out. You also get a free coin and one PPT token mailed to your front door. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Anyway, this is Bix Weir with your update for the weekend. Uh, it's going to be a big week next week. I'll talk to you guys later.